two, or three, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack to Jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Oh, it's root, root, root for the Cubby. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball. This is the from WBRN uh, Radio and on the Boston Red Network. The Monday Morning Quarterback, Boston Red here, coming to you from the Jerry Pippen Memorial Broadcast booth. Uh, an interesting uh, program. A little late today, but we normally start uh, earlier. But we had a doctor's appointment earlier today, so it sort of set things a bit uh, different, as one would say. But nonetheless, we have a very interesting program coming up here. Let me first uh, the uh, move to events over the weekend. Uh, DJ Trump uh, met with uh, Chairman Um of the uh, Workers' Party in the Democratic Republic of Korea. Very interesting uh, foreign policy uh, foray for D.J. Trump. D.J. Trump, like many presidents, when you are the incumbent, you can do things that uh, challengers cannot do. And thus, this is what we uh, were able uh, to uh, view, that he uh, took a uh, position that normally would not be uh, taken uh, by uh, a person uh, engaging in a Wilsonian uh, foreign policy. That is the foreign policy uh, coined by, named after, uh, the racist President Woodrow Wilson. Something we've observed uh, for many years in American foreign policy. There is some uh, deviation on the part of the Trump administration. It would be very interesting to see where it goes from here. But the idea of having a meeting uh, supposedly um, on the spur of a moment, I doubt that very seriously. Seriously, however, though, uh, the meeting was there. He did meet with uh, Chairman Kim, and uh, he actually was the first, as D.J. Trump, walking into the demilitarized zone in uh, the Democratic Republic of Korea. Only a few steps, but he appeared there. Other presidents have appeared after their uh, term in office. Very interesting situation there. But what could uh, come of this, uh, and of course, again, within a framework. Now, the framework is not meant to be, uh, in terms of reality, an absolute uh, total disarmament of the uh, Democratic Republic of Korea's uh, missile uh, stockpiles. But it could develop a serious framework whereby assurances are made. Uh, My take is that those assurances would include uh, China and uh, the uh, Russian Federation, that they would assure through uh, certain treaties that uh, some things uh, would not happen. In other words, the uh, government would not be overrun by the U.S. and others. Now, the Republic of Korea has been working for a long time. They would like to de- demilitarize their um, Korean peninsula and would eventually unify their country. Now, this would be very interesting, depending on what uh, D.J. Trump is able to do, being an election year, 2020. He could may reach an acceptable uh, Agreement or uh, truce. First of all, the Korean War has never official, officially ended. So we have that situation out there. But if he could make progress, uh, he could be a uh, serious a contender for a uh, Nobel Peace Prize, he and Chairman Hoon. 
Now, that would be very interesting in American politics. What it would say that he does have a framework to uh, conduct, quote-unquote, foreign policy, although he is a domestic uh, president with America first. Thus, the Democrats on notice that um, the whole thing could literally be like the proverbial rug pulled out from beneath their uh, feet. So that's a note to look forward to there. We have from the LA Times a a more in-depth story on uh, Kamala Harris and the bus to Berkeley. An interesting story there. In sadness, uh, we heard that uh, one of the uh, starting pitchers for the uh, Angels of Los Angeles, the baseball team, Tyler uh, Staggs, has a passed away in Texas. We don't have the complete information, but we do have uh, some information. We'll also talk about the Yankees and Red Sox in London. Very interesting uh, situation there. And what happened in that uh, matchup, uh, Bob Nightingale is the person in, in USA Today. We'll go over that. We'll also have the baseball uh, standings. So let's move on here uh, in this uh, special edition, we'll call it, and figure out exactly where we are here. Uh, Oops. Well, Harris, who is now a senator from uh, California, and this is uh, by Michael uh, Flanagan and Seymour Metter, I suppose. And uh, Melina uh, Mason. Anyway, uh, is the LA Times, and it's on the 30th of uh, June, today's date. And a big bus here, both voluntary and volatile. So in other words, um, Berkeley at that time was not the friendliest uh, place in the world for uh, school desegregation. From uh, 1969 to uh, 1973, it transported uh, Carly uh, Porter to an entirely different world. Like her neighbor and friend, uh, Carmela Harris, Porter was one of a thousand African-American children bust into predominantly white neighborhood to learn. It was part of the of, uh, Berkeley's bold experiment in a desegregation. But even in a city that had uh, become a worldwide symbol of 1960 Common Court, Common Court, excuse me, um, systematic racial prejudice in education and housing remained uh, deeply entrenched. That's really a hard thing to reconciliate. Porter, who is now 55, Berkeley was an oxymoron. It was a contradiction in uh, many things. Harris, uh, three years of busing from her family's mainly African-American working-class neighborhood to a prosperous European, a white enclave in the hills overlooking San Francisco Bay was... uh, at once a universal and uniquely Berkeley. As in many cities, the, uh, the discriminatory housing policy known as redlining kept African Americans from moving into European neighborhoods in uh, Berkeley, busing fuel some white flight to the suburbs. But unlike other sizable cities, Berkeley undertook its uh, busing program volunteer and required both uh, European or white and African American families to travel to unfamiliar neighborhoods. Rapid uh, demographics and political change shielded the community from the most extreme pushbacks, including violence and hobbled busing efforts in of uh, uh, nationwide. More than 50 years after Berkeley launched its busing program, Harris, one of the most f- uh, famous participants, thrust into uh, back into the. Uh, Spotlight uh, last week when she uh, addressed uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden had been uh, an opponent of busing, a states' rights man. 
She learned from her uh, personal history in Berkeley, portraying herself as a beneficiary of the change uh, battled uh, for education equality. There was a little girl in California who was part of a, a second uh, class to integrate her public schools, and she was uh, bused to school every day, contrary to enduring uh, reputation as a progressive maker. The uh, Berkeley of Harris Childhood was more politically mudded. The conservative uh, John Burke Society operated two bookstores near, didn't know that. It was until the 60s that the Democrats uh, cracked a, a Republican stronghold on the city council. African American uh, residents were restricted to living in the southern and western flats while uh, Europeans resided in the northern hills. To letter Barnett, uh, 71, a retired vice principal at Berkeley High, grew up in the same neighborhood as Harris. Her father, this is Bartlett, uh, uh, Barnett, excuse me, father, uh, a naval veteran, uh, was an airplane mechanic at a local naval station in 1945. While redlining blocked him and his wife from buying a house in a European neighborhood, even in the uh, so-called black neighborhood where they settled, she said they needed to get a uh, European uh, real estate agent to buy a house and transport them. There were certain other areas where they could buy a house, where only certain areas said, and we lived where they allowed us to live. A large influx of African Americans doing it after World War II and uh, white uh, affiliated with UC Berkeley were um, pulling the local politics to the left. In response, the school board studied the matter, concluding that uh, all but three of the uh, school the district's 17 elementary schools and two of three junior high schools were uh, segregated. Berkeley High, the city's only high school, was integrated by default in 19. Uh, 64, the, vote, uh, the board voted to uh, desegregate the high school residents. Uh, were reactions were not as extreme as, of course, in Boston, but it was uh, f- uh, far from uh, as you might assume. That is from Natalie Ornstein, a reporter for the uh, news site uh, Berkeley Side. There were definitely angry parents, desegregation opponents launched a recall campaigns of multiple uh, school board members over the junior high busing program but lost by wide margins. Charles uh, Wallenberg off of Berkeley, a city in uh, history. So in 1968 they began the integration of uh, elementary schools. Now is a picture of uh, Karma Harris and with her uh, sister uh, Meyer and her mother uh, Shamara, I think is how you pronounce that name, outside their apartment in Berkeley. The uh, parents uh, separated there. Anyway, she started uh, attending the school in 1970 as a first grader. Her mother would uh, kiss her goodbye and off to the bus she went. Leading the charge was Nell uh, Sullivan, the Berkeley School Superintendent, previously tasked with integrating Prince Edward County. That's in Virginia. And then you move along here with this. This is a rather long article. We put it up on uh, Facebook. The, they, they weren't just requiring uh, African kids to go to school in white neighborhoods. That is from Erica Frankenberg and edu- uh an education demographic professor at Penn State who researched the uh, Berkeley programs. They were also saying we need to be equitable in sharing the burden of going back and forth. That was extremely rare. From uh, fourth to sixth grade, she rode the bus to Columbus Elementary School, later renamed after the icon uh, Rosa Parks. Teachers uh, were Africans and... uh, Oh, let's see who, well, we don't have who the person here was, 
what Han uh, learned uh, African history, some Swahili. Every uh, let let every boys and sing the civil rights national anthem. There's some pictures here. Uh, Fifty seven. So all these people in the story were in their fifties. Uh, let me just uh, move along here and finish this up. But others who fled to avoid busing the district saw a decline in enrollment in uh, the 15 years after integration from 16,000 to a 9,000. Now, this uh, Carly Porter uh, spoke warmly of her experience recalling recalling uh, Swedish, Jewish, and Latino friends as she uh, she made at uh, Thousand Oaks Elementary School. There's a good picture here of uh, Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Kamala Harris. We'll put this up later. Anyway, this is uh, the uh, end here. Uh, she would not be where she is today if she had not had the opportunity. This is Kamala Harris. The legacy in every single uh, kid in uh, Berkeley from grades K through 5 is the baseline for some uh, resources at their school, the quality of teachers to school. That's from Ornstein, uh, the Berkeley uh, side a reporter. Anyway, that is that story. And let me move along here. Hopefully. Now, this is the Democratic devo- debate. This is uh, from uh, David uh, Lauter, I suppose. Uh, we are getting some answers now as, as to who won the debate, actually. Biden is still in the end. I think we went over some of this, but uh, it's shrunk in position as Biden. Bernie Sanders and Warren, uh, she's from Commonwealth, according to post-debate surveys, which uh, provide data on how the debate affected the field. Harris from California jumped from 8% support nationwide uh, before the debate uh, to 17 Now, this is the morning uh, consult done for... Uh, well, the morning consult is politicals. Anyway, this was done for the uh, 538 website. Biden, by contrast, dropped uh, from uh, 39 to uh, 31. That's an eight-point drop uh, for Biden in that particular poll. Overall support for other candidates did not shift significantly. Several included Warren, Cory Booker, and uh, Hulan uh, Castro. Saw uh, significant jumps. In fact, uh, Castro got on uh, ABC, so it's a little different race there. A CNN poll conducted showed a tighter race with Harrison Warren, each picking up support, and uh, Biden uh, dropping to only a narrow lead. That was from CNN. A third poll, YouGov. I think we had the YouGov poll. Uh, Biden uh, gets support from 22% of those surveyed. Down a ten percent. That's in the CNN poll in May. Harris at seventeen. Um, Liz Warren at fifteen, and Bernie at fourteen. That's kind of an interesting poll. There usually uh, Bernie's always had essentially a tie for a second there. The uh, two important caveats apply to all such polls. The impact of a big event like a debate often fades over time. No doubt about that. Only 38% of the voters, according to YouGov, said they had a good idea of which candidate they would all support. Now, the morning consult here, uh, let's see, the CNN poll, 1613, and the YouGov, they had two surveys. That is over 1,000. That's an Internet poll. The surveys have a margin of error one percentage point in either direction, pre-debate numbers. Anyway, I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to this. It's just... What what one should pay attention to is how these people are uh, are covered in the news itself. I don't think we'll cover the DJ Trump matter because we've already uh, talked about that. Let's go uh, to uh, <coughs> more of the shameful DeMarco in uh, Texas. This is uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was one of several um, members of the House uh, to 
go to uh, Texas, and uh, this is the Clint, uh, Clint Texas uh, station, Beat O'Rourke. Um, Ivor Hill was supposed to have some rallies there. Um, there's a border station um, being uh, kept in, uh, in horrifying uh, conditions, but included uh, psychological abuse and being told to drink from toilets. This is pathetic. I mean, people uh, must be fired. And they also had a secretive uh, Facebook uh, group on top of everything else, talking about throwing burritos at Congress types. This is some of the Border Patrol people. This is an example of what we are dealing with here uh, and the kinds of mentality, uh, period, that um, is being forced on these innocent uh, children here. Rhodes is not independently confirmed to her account. Well, anyway, which oversees that. That is the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. Conditions at the uh, facilities along the border. There, of course, been flashpoints, and various doctors have been there. A face group, uh, secret Facebook a group, uh, following reports by uh, Pro uh, Publica, said the offensive content had uh, been posted in a private group. There's a bunch of those around for current and former uh, Border Patrol types, including jokes about uh, the depths of uh, migrants and sexually explicit comments. Referring to uh, Ocasio Cortez. After leaving the El Paso facility, uh, Cortez wrote in a tweet I see why uh, the uh, CP uh, officials were being uh, so physically and sexually threatening towards me, an apparent uh, reference uh, to the uh, Facebook group. The uh, uh, CBP condemned the Facebook group group and acknowledge that it included a number of workers there. From Matthew Killam, as associate commissioner of that office of professional responsibility, called the social media activity disturbing and said it violated the agency's policies, so assuming some people will be moving. Now, according to uh, Pro, uh, ProPublica, uh, the uh, group had a uh, 9,500 members. The posts were completely inappropriate and contrary to the honor and integrity I see and expect from our agents. That is uh, from the Border Patrol's chief, Carl uh, Provost. The document revealed U.S. agents have feared riots by uh, immigrants uh, being held over crowded positions. Well, they would be in riots also if they were in the, those kinds of uh, positions. Now, on May the 7th, I visited here. This is one of many uh, visits. These overtrowling uh, conditions there, uh, subhuman uh, conditions. Kevin uh, Mac. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, and. Uh, Alan 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 said in a statement (coughs) he would be uh, traveling to El Salvador (coughs) for a visit there and also Honduras okay we'll finish that up and uh, let's go uh, to ESPN (coughs) <coughs> okay. Let me take a break here. It is a uh, hay fever season, no doubt about it. Anyway, nonetheless, the Yankees and Red Sox were in uh, London. This is a kind of interesting situation to expose the people of the UK <coughs> that have According to this uh, article by uh, Bob Nightingale, they were missing out on 150 years of uh, baseball. Nonetheless, the final goal, this was in uh, London uh, Stadium, was 12-8, to the Yankees 12-8 uh, victory. That was on Sunday. Uh, they had two games there. They also played on uh, Saturday. The uh, Yankees also won that game. 
from Alex Cora. He is the manager of the Red Sox. They are lots better than us right now, no doubt about it. Well, on uh, this continent, the Yankees certainly proven to be the most uh, fit survivors doing nine hours and six minutes of baseball with the teams contributing uh, 50 runs, uh, 65 hits, 16 doubles, and 10 homers. It was a uh, Coors Field on a steroids, that's according to Larry Rothschild. He's the uh, Yankees uh, pitching coach. Games like this just don't happen. And now it's back to reality with no more sightseeing tours to uh, Buckingham Palace on the London Bridge. Uh, it was kind of interesting here. I heard a lot about this. Incidentally, while we are on this, I'm just looking at USA Today. Kevin Durant now goes to the New York Nets, who used to be the Jersey Nets. But he's out for a year, but nonetheless, uh, they expect him to be uh, back, uh, period. Uh, so let's see what uh, Kevin Durant, oh, this is on Instagram. Uh, went from about 300 followers to uh, <clears throat> 200,000 followers there. So anyway, this is kind of interesting here. There's much of Nightingale's article here. Love to see the All-Star game here in uh, London. Well, it won't be in London, but Anyway, it's interesting. Other teams have played next year. That London game uh, will be the, let's see, it will be the Cubs and Cardinals. They'll be there in uh, 2020. I think we look uh, forward uh, to that uh, and see uh, yeah, where you get a chance to meet the Duke and Duchess of uh, Saxon with uh, Mookie uh, Betts. Uh, was there and Hoogie. Megan uh, Markley as a uh, uh, distant cousin. <laughs> anyway, kind of interesting there. Let me just uh, quickly here, since this is the Monday Money Place, somewhere here we had the uh, standings uh, for the uh, various teams. Hopefully, here we go. We don't usually use a newspaper, but today we will. Anyway, in the American League, the Yankees, of course, are on top. And uh, they're paying, what, 6 uh, 59 ball. Then Tampa Bay and then Boston, 11 games back. Tampa Bay is uh, 7 games back. That's in the American League East in the Central. It is uh, Minnesota and Cleveland is 8 games. And in uh, the West is the American League. Houston is on top. Texas is 6 and a half games back. Very close there. Then Oakland is 7 games back. And uh, the Angels are uh, 11 games back there. In the National League East, Atlanta's on top. Then Philadelphia, they are six games back. And Washington is seven and a half games back. In the Central, the Cubbies finally got on top. But Milwaukee, basically they're tied up 45 and uh, 39 for both the Cubs and Milwaukee. And the Cards are uh, getting very close here. They are three games back there at 500. And let's see, Pittsburgh is, uh, they have three games back, I'm sorry. Um, St. Louis is, and Pittsburgh is five games back. And finally in the West, it's all Dodgers out there. Um, the uh, Colorado and San Diego, uh, Colorado's 12 games back. San Diego is uh, 13 and a half, and Arizona is 14. So a fairly close uh, division uh, there. And let's see, what else do we have here? We had some polling. Uh, let me see if I can find it. No, we got a uh, hay fever and fever attack. Hope I can talk a little better here. Anyway, this is uh, the CNN poll. I'm not sure if that was the one they talked about. Biden is at 22, Sanders at 14, uh, Warren at 15. 15, that was July the 1st, and Harris at 17, uh, and these other characters have fallen down. Boone Judge is at 4, O'Rourke is at 3, he's come up a little, and Booker's at 3 also, and Klobuchar is at 2, she's doing a little better, Castro is down to 1 according to this. Now, this is a national poll here, Biden up by 5 in that poll, and then we go to the Hill uh, poll, uh, 
Biden's up by 18, he's 33. Harris, Sanders is 15. Uh, Liz Warren is 9. Harris is 11. Bernard Judge is down in the single digits at 6, so he's falling down. O'Rourke actually has come up to 4, so he's rising a little bit there. And the uh, job approval rating, uh, this is from Rasmussen at 46 uh, for DJ Trump. We'll see if he gets any bounce off of of either being in uh, the uh, Korean setup or any of the other setups. On Sunday, this was the uh, political morning consult poll. Uh, They have Biden up by 14. Bernie is at 18. Warren is at 12. Harris is also at uh, 12. Wooden Judge is down to 6. O'Rourke is at 2. And Booker is at 3. And Amy Klobuchar is there. They're all waiting to see what happens uh, with uh, Joe Lynchbox Biden. Uh, It'll be very interesting. We're starting to look at our model here and where is Joe Biden going. Well, Joe Biden uh, is a very interesting situation. A few more problems as he had uh, with Harris. And Joe Biden will continue to go south. And it'll be a very interesting uh, race. Uh, We see it as at least a very interesting race uh, coming uh, up there with uh, Biden, particularly as Biden... uh, it gets into the uh, single digits. Now, we are interested in it because he's in double in some and single in others. But, again, it's very, very early in the race. Uh, and let me do this one thing here. And we'll look back at this uh, later the morning consult. We're pulling it up here and looking at the uh, cross tabs. We won't do the uh, cross tabs uh today, but we will do those. Incidentally, we still have the uh, week bed was, so we need to get it out. We're a little bit behind, but we'll get that out. And we also have a numbers man that's come from WBRN Radio and the Boston Red Network. We'll get uh, numbers man out. We're about finished with with uh, numbers man. We'll be talking about uh, GDP figures, uh, consumer uh, confidence from the conference board, and uh, some other things as to where the economy is or is not going. What is going on? Uh, well, nothing with Brexit now. But uh, G20 didn't get a lot of things out of the G20, I mean, as far as solid evidence there. So we are continuing looking backward. Anyway, this will do it uh, for the uh, Monday morning quarterback uh, an evening edition, as we'll call it. But nonetheless, again, uh, to uh, the family, of course, of Tyler uh, Staggs, may he rest in a peace. And we have a photo of him on our show, Maka, here. You can also find us at uh, the Google uh, Podcast, uh, at uh, iHeart, Stitcher, Spreaker. YouTube, Twitter, running around Facebook, we'll be there. And we have some other inter- some interesting program coming up. We'll be reviewing uh, a book about uh, John Roberts. The uh, Chief Justice has a number of books that we'll be doing uh, for summer reading uh, there. And we could get our medical things out of the way.